Welcome back friends to this brand new tech handy course on VMware vSphere 7. If you're interested in VMware virtualization, you're in the right place. In our previous video, we configured our ESXi hosts, we explored the DCUI direct client user interface, set static network settings, configured NTP, enabled SSH, and prepared our hosts for management. In this video, we'll take the next major step, installing the VMware vCenter server appliance, also known as vCSA. Before we begin the installation, let's take a moment to understand what vCenter actually is and why it's so important in the vSphere environment. The vCenter server appliance is the centralized management platform for VMware vSphere. It allows us to manage multiple ESXi hosts and all the virtual machines running on them, all from one web-based interface. With vCenter, we can create data centers, clusters, and enable advanced features like vMotion, DRS, HA, templates, and snapshots. Essentially, vCenter is the brain of our virtualization environment, it connects to all of our ESXi nodes, controls networking and storage configurations, and monitors the performance of virtual machines. Each node runs several virtual machines. Through vCenter, you can control these VMs, power them on or off, move them between hosts using vMotion, manage storage, networking, and even automate tasks. For simple understanding, vCSA is your control tower. ESXi hosts are your airplanes. And the VMs are the passengers you manage efficiently through a single interface. The first step before we start the installation is to create a DNS entry for our vCenter server in our Windows Server Domain Controller. On DC01, open DNS Manager, expand your domain, in my case it's techhandy.com. Right-click and select New Host A Record. Enter the name of your new vCSA. For example, I will assign the name as vCenter and also assign it the IP address. We will create DHCP reservation as well once our vCenter appliance created and got MAC address. This DNS record is critical for smooth communication later on. Next, we'll mount the vCSA ISO that we previously downloaded from Broadcom to our DC01 virtual machine. Once the ISO is mounted, open it and navigate to VexiUI Installer Win32 folder, then run the installer.exe file. This will open the VMware vCenter Server Installer window. From here, select Install to begin the setup. The installation is divided into two main parts, Stage 1 and Stage 2. In Stage 1, we deploy the actual appliance to our ESXi node 01. Click Next on Introduction page and then accept the license agreement on Next page. Now enter the details for our node 01, since that's where we'll install the vCenter VM. Enter the host's IP address or FQDN, root username, and password, then continue. You might see a certificate warning, just accept it to proceed. Next, specify the name of the new virtual machine, I'll name it VCSA7, and set a root password for the appliance. Then choose the deployment size. Since this is a lab environment, we'll go with the tiny configuration, which uses fewer resources but still provides full vCenter functionality. Now we'll select a data store to store our vCenter VM. Since we did not create any data store yet, let's create one on node 01, 
we'll create a new data store using the 1000 gigabytes thin provision disk that we attached earlier. Name it something like data store 01 and select it for deployment. As you can see we have 1000 gigabytes drive attached and available that we created at the time of ESXi build. Let's create new data store using that disk. We are going with VMFS option for now, we'll explain all these options later under upcoming storage video series. Name it something easy to recognize later and select the disk for deployment. We are not making any partition and going with full disk option. Click finish once ready, make sure disk is empty, it will erase all data and format the disk. Our data store is now ready. Once you click back and come again to data store option, you will be able to see the newly created data store. In real world those data stores could already be created and assigned for deployments. We will go with thin disk mode, since we don't want to allocate full disk space. It might be different in your case based on company requirements. Finally, configure the network settings, choose your management network, assign FQDN of your vCenter based on our DNS entry that we assigned earlier. Enter vCenter IPv4 static address, subnet mask, gateway, and DNS server. Double check these details before clicking finish to begin deployment. The installer will now start copying files and creating the appliance VM. This stage 1 installation will take 15 to 20 minutes to complete.
While this process runs, switch to the Node 01 web console, and you'll see a new virtual machine appear named VCSA7. That's your vCenter server being deployed. Once Stage 1 completes successfully, click Continue or log into the shared link to start Stage 2. This stage configures and initializes vCenter services. First, set up the time synchronization. We'll use synchronized time with the ESXi host, since we configured global NTP server on node in previous video. You can go as per your company policies. You can also choose to enable SSH access for administrative purposes, we will left it disabled for now. Next, configure the single sign-on, SSO, domain. I'll use the default domain vSphere.local and create a strong administrator password. This account will be used to log into vCenter after installation. Since it's our first vCenter and we don't have existing SSO domain we skip the second option and hit next. Optionally, you can join the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program or skip it if you prefer. Review all settings and then click finish to start the configuration. The setup process will take several minutes as services initialize and vCenter finalizes the deployment. Once stage 2 is complete, you'll see a success message with a link to access vCenter. Open your browser and go to https colon slash slash vcenter.techhandy.com or use the appliance IP address. Make sure you are using HTML5 browser. Accept the certificate warning and continue to login page. Click on launch vSphere client. You'll be greeted by the VMware vSphere client login page. Log in using the administrator account you created under the vSphere.local domain. This will open your vCenter dashboard for the first time, where you can see system health, summary, and basic configurations.
Congratulations! You've successfully deployed your VMware vCenter server appliance in your vSphere 7 nested lab. Before we wrap up let's quickly add DHCP reservation for our newly created vCSA machine. Let's log in back to our node 01 and get the MAC address of our vCSA 7 machine. Go to VCSA Machine Network Settings and copy the MAC address under Network Adapter. Since the machine is running an option is grayed out, I will manually type in MAC address to Notepad and then use it for reservation. We've successfully deployed VMware vCenter Server Appliance 7. In the next video, we'll perform the initial configurations inside vCenter, we'll create a data center, build clusters, and add our ESXi nodes for centralized management. If you're finding this series helpful, make sure to like this video, subscribe to TechHandy, and stay tuned for more deep dive tutorials on VMware vSphere 7.